Welcome or welcome back. My name is Erica and in this video we are going to focus on cleaning and organizing. We have about a month until school starts and we also have an upcoming trip and so I wanted to take the time to get some things done that have been bothering me. So we're just going to tackle all of those projects, organize a few things, do some deep cleaning, and just make this space feel a lot better and just cleaner. So you stick with me, we're gonna tackle all of that today. So this major deep clean of my house is kind of random. And really the major things that were bothering me is the dust, specifically on these lights. I don't know the last time I dusted them. And to be honest, a lot of these projects, I'm a little bit ashamed that I let them get this way. Like for instance, here in my bathroom, these two containers just kind of stay put and I clean around them. And I tend to do that a lot. And it's kind of lazy, but it's also just, I'm trying to get things clean. And so I'll clean up the surfaces that we're actually using and not really move things to clean underneath them. So this space really desperately needed a good cleaning and dusting. And so I went ahead and cleaned the counters and cleaned the actual, I don't know, it's like a crate and then that basket. My other goal with this whole thing was to really just minimize and declutter a little bit. You know, we tend to just throw things in the closet or throw things here and there and not really take the time to consolidate things. And so I just wanted to do that. Not that I really got rid of anything in this area in particular, but I kind of just rearranged things to make the flow a little better. So I put all the hair stuff together, all the lotions and skincare together. And then the other basket has, you know, our cotton balls and Q-tips and, uh, hair ties and stuff like that. And honestly, this didn't take that long, but it really made a huge difference. And it just made it feel even that more clean. So moving on to what I like to call my Monica closet. <laughs> if you have ever watched Friends, Monica is a neat freak and she has a closet that she just shoves everything in and that's what I feel like this closet is. It holds all of my like paint and my tools and just seasonal decor and other random stuff. And the reason I'm cleaning this out isn't because it was super messy, but number one, I needed to get my cooler out of there um, just to have for the summer. And then if you've seen a few of my last videos, you might know that I bought an excessive amount of polyfill. And right now it's just sitting in my closet and it's super annoying. It's super in the way. And like I said at the beginning, um, we're going on a trip soon. Actually, my parents are coming to stay with my kids um, while my husband and I go away. And I just wanted to get that out of my closet for us and for them. Is it that big of a deal? No, but it's just really annoying. And until I can figure out what to do with all of this, it's getting shoved in the closet. <laughs> so I'm making room for it and it is what it is. Sometimes you just need to get things out of eyesight and then you can kind of figure out what you want to do with them or you might just forget about them and sometimes I do that too but some of these projects were I was really again trying to declutter and organize and just make spaces feel better again
So next up was a kitchen project and you might be seeing a theme that kind of all of these are leading to other things. So I finished the closet and I got my cooler out and now I need to make space for my cooler. I had it stored in here for quite a while and then I decided to put it in the closet. Now it's going back under here. Uh, but that's where I keep my laundry soap and my flour and oats. You can see I just bought a new bag of flour. Uh, real quick, kind of random, but uh, I get my flour mostly from Azure Standard. I can buy like a 30 pound bag of organic flour for pretty inexpensive. Um, or sometimes I'll just get the flour from BJ's. I think they have like 12 pound bags. I used to get them from Costco when we had a Costco near us. And then water. So it's hurricane season, so I make sure that we stock up on water. I just get some almost every time I go shopping or every other time. But anyway, I needed to make space for that. And again, all these projects kind of trickled in to something else. So then now I'm up at the top of my pantry, just trying to make room for my oats. If you were here a few months ago, I reorganized everything and I've kept it pretty clean and organized, but just moving stuff around. And now it fits, it all looks nice, and we're moving on. The next thing in the kitchen was this cabinet. I hate this cabinet because my stuff doesn't fit in there very well. It's got that top shelf and I make it work, um, but you can't really utilize the space underneath that shelf. Anyway, I can't do anything about it, but it needed to be cleaned out because my toaster gets crumbs all over, so I have to do this periodically. And so while I was cleaning this out, you can see that I've got those, I don't even know what they're called, they, they're not sticky, but however they painted the inside of this cabinet, they're stuck to it. So I decided to just pull them out because it really makes it hard to clean. And I had a bunch of contact paper left over from a project and it's sitting in my Monica closet. Um, and so I was like, why not just put it in there? Like it's not gonna harm anything. This is already all tore up on the bottom of the cabinet anyway. I'm sure once we move out, they'll just repaint it and it'll all be wonderful. Um, but this was like at like 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. But you know what? Sometimes the idea strikes and you just got to follow through. I'm someone that once I get an idea, I just have to work on it until it's done. And I can't stop until it's done. So I made it happen. It really wasn't that hard. This wooden contact paper I actually used to make a shelf topper in my laundry room. And I really like how realistic it looks. I mean, you can tell it's fake, but from far away, it, it looks pretty nice. So I thought I would make a faux wooden shelf on the top and then use some really pretty blue contact paper that I got at the Dollar Tree on the bottom. I didn't make it perfect. It's not perfect. You can see I've got some gaps on the sides. I just went in and put other strips. The, the wood grain wasn't going in the same direction, but I really don't care. It looks so much better and it's going to be much easier to clean. Um, so yeah, and I had to use some packing tape to tape this down. It really wasn't sticking well because underneath is, it's not paint. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I love how this turned out. No one cares. No one in my family cares, but I care because it's pretty. And like I said, it's going to be a lot easier to clean. Mm -hmm. So day two of this massive clean, I am now mostly focusing on the deep cleaning aspects more than I am organizing. Uh, so like I said, with the bathroom, you know, there's spots that I just don't clean and I'm really bad about dusting. So the top of the refrigerator, I had done this maybe like two months ago, I don't know, but I wanted to get that nice and dusted and just get everything put back up there. It's kind of like our storage for random stuff. Uh, but I wanted to get that nice and clean. And then I wanted to move on to our ceiling fans. We use our ceiling fans all the time. This is actually one of the only places I've ever lived that had number one lights in the bedrooms and ceiling fans. 
and there's probably conflicting feelings about ceiling fans, but I love them. My husband is a really hot sleeper. I need the noise, and so it works for both of us. But they do get really dusty, and this is something that I do, you know, periodically um, because I'm allergic to dust, and it's just, you know, we don't need that flying around. Uh, so if I can minimize it, then I do. So I tackled our ceiling fan in our room and then my kids as well. And on this particular day, I also needed to wash the sheets. So I decided to do this before stripping the beds. That way, if any dust, you know, which it will, <laughs> flies onto the sheets, I can just scoop them up and throw them right in the wash instead of getting it like on our mattress or mattress covers. Um, so that's what I did. Like I said, I tackled both our room and my kids' rooms, got the ceiling fans cleaned, got the blinds cleaned, and then stripped the beds and got some fresh, fresh sheets on our beds. So now that all the dusting is done, I need to address the floors. It's been about a week since I mopped, so I need to first vacuum and then we're going to mop all the floors. Uh, now I want to talk really quick about this vacuum. So I was in a pinch because my vacuum had died and I ne just needed something quick. And I was looking on Amazon and came across this little vacuum. I think it was like 30 bucks and it's awesome. It, it works so good. We've got all wood floors and just two rugs, uh, and it works great on the bare floors. Not so much the rugs. It, it works just fine, you know, I get by. But if you've got all wood floors or tile or whatever, check this out. I can't recommend it enough, especially when you're in a pinch. And honestly, if it dies after a year, I don't care too much because it was only $30. I hope it lasts longer than that, of course. But anyway, so we've got everything vacuumed and now I'm on to mopping. And the solution that I use is hot water, a little bit of dish soap, some alcohol, uh, vinegar, and then I'm just doing essential oils this time. And this mop system is the O Cedar. You, you know, you put the mop in and you spin it around and it gets all the excess water out of the mop head. And I absolutely love it. I have gone through so many different options for mops. Um, I came for where we used to live, it was all carpet and only just a little bit of wood. Now I have all wood. And so I went through the Swiffer, the Swiffer Wet Jet. I did the O Cedar spray mop, which I do love, but it just, I didn't feel like it was cleaning my floors enough. That's more for like spot cleaning and stuff. So I finally got this and I absolutely love it. It works so well. I highly recommend it um, if you've never used one and you've got a lot to mop. Again, super recommend it. Now we are on to the final project, which is tackling the linen closet in my bathroom. Now, I do keep this fairly organized. However, I was noticing that I wasn't utilizing the space as well as I could be. And it's also been a while since I've gone through and consolidated things and just took inventory of what I had. Because lately I've been buying things that I already have. I'm not checking. So I wanted to go through First thing I'm going to do is go through all of our like medical things, band-aids, all that type of stuff. And if you haven't done that in a while, I highly recommend that you do because I don't know about you, but a lot of times we'll buy things that, you know, you only need for one. Like somebody got a specific injury and we needed, I don't know what it was, whatever it might be, or like a sickness or all kinds of things. And then you don't use them again and they expire and you just are hanging on to them. Or somebody used the last Band-Aid and didn't throw the, the box away or whatever it might be. So I highly recommend just go do it, go through it, 
get rid of the things that are expired or that, you know, empty boxes. I was able to consolidate everything into this bigger bin. So I removed two bins and just put one back. And so that felt really good. I, I like doing stuff like that. It just makes it feel more organized and it makes you feel like, you know, you got rid of some stuff. The other bin that I really needed to tackle was this one. And this is where we keep all of our extra stuff. So extra soap, extra toothpaste, you know, flossers, whatever. Um, and I've realized that we have so much stuff from the dentist. We, every time we go, we all get the toothpaste and all the things and it just sits in this bin and we don't do anything with it. And I learned that floss expires. The toothpaste does too, obviously, but like some of these, we, we've only been going to this particular dentist for the last like two and a half years. And all of these were expired. I shouldn't say all, but a lot of them were expired already. I had no idea they expired. So I just threw them away. We actually don't use them anyway. They are nice to have for the occasional whatever. Uh, but I was able to get rid of a lot and that felt really good. I was able to use these little bags that we get from the dentist as well and just store extra toothbrushes and the toothpaste and everything. And again, I just was able to consolidate, able to get rid of some stuff. I was able to move some things into this bin so that they weren't taking up space on the shelf. And it just feels better. It feels good. If you made it this far, thank you so much for being here. And I hope that you found some encouragement in this video, whether that be motivation to tackle those projects that you've been putting off and addressing the issues that have been bothering you. I know it feels daunting sometimes, but it really feels good in the end. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate you. If you stay tuned to my next video, I'm going to be doing a sit down coffee chat where I talk about how I tackle cleaning and all the things that go along with it. So make sure you stay tuned for that. That'll be coming on Friday. But again, thank you so much for being here. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, turn that bell notification on so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. But I will see you next time and I hope you have a great rest of your day.